Hey guys, welcome to my Labyrinth deck profile for my actual real life Labyrinth deck. Um, so, the tins came out yesterday, today, uh, so I decided to go ahead and pick up a couple of Labyrinth cards and uh, give my shot, or I guess take my shot at making the deck in real life and actually playing it. Uh, since some of you know, I've been playing a lot of Labyrinth on. Uh, master duels at the moment, just trying to understand the deck um, and master, um, you know, different aspects of the deck and understand my tough matchups and my weak matchups and and all that jazz. Now, obviously, it's gonna look a lot different compared to master duels, right? We have a totally different ban list, totally different format, totally different decks to face against, and so um, this is kind of like my work in progress. Um, that's my huge disclaimer for this deck is that. All, all that you see here today is just stuff that I'm kind of working on putting together. I'm not quite finished with the deck 100%, but I do want to kind of talk about it and give you guys some um, ideas and uh, or to how to at least build a um, Labyrinth deck. And this is more or less kind of cookie cutter-ish, right? Like I'm playing a lot of cards that other people are playing. Um, you know, kind of it's kind of just a, a good jumping point to at least get started on building the deck and you can definitely kind of diverge it however you like uh, I know some people have played with um, the Unchained cards in Labyrinth um, me personally I have not tried that out so I don't really know how that plays but I'm just gonna stick with like a build where I think kinda encompasses how Labyrinth should be played and um, at least kinda emulate the style that is being played on my Master Duel uh, deck so let's go ahead and talk about it and uh, yeah, let's, let's see where it takes us, right? All right, so as I mentioned, this is gonna be a 40 card flat deck, um, not 41 or anything like that. I'm playing 41 in Master Duel just because the space is a little tight and I just wanna you know, try out some cards and it's a best of one format. So sometimes playing more than 40 is, is okay. Where in the, in the TCG, I because we have our side deck, we don't have to try to squeeze every single card, every single tech card we want in the deck. We can leave some of it for the side deck, and then um, games two and three, we can side it in and out um, according to what we need. So uh, let's go ahead and talk about the basic of the deck. Uh, I am playing, I think, about 12 hand traps or so. I think that's kind of normal, uh, more or less. In Master Duel, you play about the same amount, about 12 hand traps or so. Uh, so let's talk about the first one. Uh, first one, I got Triple Nibiru. Uh, so, the beer is okay in this deck because of I, w I would say two things, right? So the first thing is uh, it lets us go uh, second a little bit better by just being able to threaten our opponent's board and just clearing it all. Um, and the interaction with the beer has with your furniture is pretty interesting, where you can activate the beer and then chain one of your furnitures and discard Nibiru so that would sacrifice your, your opponent's entire board and they won't get a token and you still won't get the uh, and you won't, you also won't get the Nibiru token so that's the one interaction the another thing is that uh, the reason why I kinda like Nibiru in this deck is because um, if it ever becomes dead in your hand you can always discard it with the uh, furniture so it's, it's never really dead it's never really like bad if it is really bad in a matchup like if you're playing against the mirror match or something like that then yeah you can just cut this um, put this into your side deck play something else um, but for the most part um, in your main deck this this card will hit a lot of decks which is kind of nice um, yeah so triple new biru it's kind of a, it's kind of like a replacement for max c um, in master duel I don't really like playing Nibiru and max c in the same deck namely because if you activate max c um, if you see one or the other, it's good. If you see both of them in your hand, it's kind of bad because then you have to you have to decide between maxi or Nibiru. Or in case I guess the like the best case scenario is you maxi them and then they take the maxi challenge and then you also Nibiru them on top of it. That's kind of like the best case scenario. But most of the time, if you maxi someone, they they're gonna stop. And if you have Nibiru in your hand, you're not gonna really be uh, using its effect. And so sometimes having both those hand traps are kind of conflicting. And I don't particularly like that. Uh, next off, just three Ash, just kind of your really basic generic, um, s s you know, hand trap against most decks. Uh, so yeah, triple Ash here. Not really much to say about that. All right, so this one's gonna be kind of controversial here. Uh, I have the Bistral Monsters in my deck. 
Now, they're not that like, great, honestly, in the TCG, but I still use them because I like their body and the fact that they can kind of search out um, each other, in a sense. Like, you know, Mem Memu can get out Druid Swarm. You have Druid Swarm, you can send it to the graveyard, and then you play Mammut, grab it back from your graveyard. So you can kind of have, like, that sort of uh, resource loop going on. So I, I kind of like that, and you can always summon them as long as you have something in your own grave. Um, if you don't like the Bistral package, you can definitely play something like um, Triple Drone and Lockbird, or just some other hand trap that you prefer. Um, or you can play the um, you can play Gamma and maybe Delta and the Driver, or you can play Call by the Graves, or you can play the um, Isiju Suff Shufflers like um, Medora and Keldo. So th those are some options. So I think this kind of like is your um, your open space to kind of play around with. Uh, for me, I'm just gonna go ahead and play the three Bistrials because they have worked out well in Master Duel. Granted, it is a different format, um, but I do like its bodies. And this, by playing the Bistrials, it allows you to go into Chaos Angel with Ariana um, and one of the Bistrials. So that's a uh, kind of like a small interaction that sometimes comes up. Uh, but yeah, otherwise, I mean, they're, st they're still decent bodies, 25 beaters. Uh, and um, fetches a card. If not, you can also replace it with like maybe Fenrir uh, is another good replacement for the Bistrials. I don't have any Fenrir, so uh, I'm, I'm not really obviously not playing it right now. Okay, so for the actual lab stuff here, we have just a standard um, 3 3 1. Now, I know some people like playing two clue clocks. Uh, sorry, the glare's in the way. The, uh, I got some of these matte sleeves and while they're supposed to be matte, they're kind of giving off the glare. Anyways, um, some people pl like playing more Clue Clock. I personally no don't. I tried it. I hated it. Clue Clock just does not do anything in your hand by itself. Um, it, you need other stuff to enable a, a Clue Clock. And what I like about Clue Clock is if I need it, I'll search for it. If I don't need it, I'm never going to search for it. Um, while it's part of the hand loop um, combo, it's not really a huge part of the hand loop combo. Like you don't really necessarily need it um, to you know do your hand loops and stuff like that or your resource loop, um, but it is kind of nice. But you know, uh, playing more than one, maybe two or even three, like in some builds, it gets really cloggy. I I don't personally like that, um, so that's why I'm just playing the um, just a three and the one. I always like seeing these in my opening hands. They always seem to work out. The only time these cards are ever bad is if they, your opponent has an Ash Blossom. So if you go Chandelier or Stovey, set a Welcome, and you activate the Welcome and they Ash it, then you're neg one card. So just be careful of that. But outside of that, these are definitely fantastic cards to have and to play. And I personally just think one Clue Cock has been uh, fine. Um, if I ever need it, I search it out with uh, the Ariane. Uh, speaking of which, Trooper Ariane, or Ariana, I guess you should say, um, she's kind of like your straddles of the deck. And, you know, if she sticks on the board, she can just net you more cards. And if you bounce her with uh, Big Welcome, she can net you another card. So she so she kind of helps with the whole hand, um, hand loop sort of thing. Um, so definitely, I think Triple Ariana is, is kind of like a must in the deck. Next off, you have the uh, Lovely and Lady. So two lady, one lovely, uh, never needed more. Sometimes it's nice to have a third lady for those long, long, grindy games. Um, but for the most part, you don't really need it because um, you usually don't get to that super duper grindy game state. Um, and plus, if you draw multiple copies of these, it's really, really not that great. Um, even opening up with just two ladies sometimes, I, like my hand's kind of bad. So um, I definitely think two lady uh, and one lovely is good enough. Uh, yeah, so unless Konami hits them or something, but you know, uh, I think that's a good ratio there. All right, next up for our spells, just triple Pot of Extravagance. Um, obviously, you don't have to play it. You can play uh, Prosperity. I always like Extravagance for two things. Uh, one thing, it's a really good um, Ash bait. So if you activate this, the ash it cool, you can probably resolve your big welcome and your, or your regular welcome. Or if they don't ash this, you just draw more cards, obviously. Um, extravagance helps keeps your hand kind of full for the cost of the um, Stovey and 
chandelier because they do eat cards out of your hand pretty quickly and so it's kind of nice to be able to replenish some resources with basically a pot of greed so um, yeah triple is good if, if it ever becomes dead in your hand also you can always discard it to the the stovey and the chandelier so um, at least with three you're bound to at least open up with one to use and I guess if you open up with two you can use one and use another one during your um, the turn after and you'll be drawing like you know four cards so which is pretty good uh, I think next off one labyrinth labyrinth um, it's super searchable you don't really need it it's kind of like a almost a win more card sometimes um, but if you set up this card well and um, your opponent doesn't get rid of it it can just generate you a lot of resources it can be an answer to certain things because um, this card doesn't really have any way or this deck doesn't really have any way of dealing with the back row that well so if your opponent has like defissure or you know a skill drain or something like that you can't really attack the the back row that well and labyrinth labyrinth kind of helps you deal um, to deal with the back row and um, allows you to abuse chaos angel or or just basically any fiend in your um, in your graveyard um, so yeah labyrinth labyrinth there just the one copy all right um, so far everything's pretty standard right so next off we have three big welcomes and two regular labyrinth or welcome labyrinth uh, big welcome is the one that enables all your degenerate stuff um, being able to bounce things um, and then you know being able to recur itself in the graveyard in terms of just being removal in the graveyard which is also nice uh, labyrinth labyrinth it doesn't really do anything by itself um, and it locks you into fiends and it only summons out your other fiends from the deck so it's not that great plus you can also if you bounce stuff or whatnot you can always set it again so uh, I don't think you need three just two is good enough from my play experience um, but definitely three well um, big welcome is what you really need unfortunately big welcome was not reprinted so it is kind of a pricey card now I pulled a bunch from my judge packs so uh, I have a play set now <laughs> so that's why we're playing labyrinth this time around uh, rather than uh, some other deck or I guess rather than trap tricks right I'm playing the the other trap deck okay for our other traps I uh, the only floodgate I play is skill drain I definitely like playing uh, labyrinth under skill drain uh, just because your cards is just so huge your monsters are so huge under skill drain uh, and you don't really need your monster effects to win anyways most of your monster effects either work in the graveyard or work in the hand or they tribute themselves under um, and they tribute themselves from the field so skill drain doesn't really stop that or if you have big welcome it also works under big welcome so let's say you um, what I do a lot is I summon Ariana or Ari yeah Ariana and then there's skill drain on the board I still activate her effect then um, with her effect I'll chain big welcome um, so I'll summon my I don't know whatever I want bounce the Ariana back and then still search with the Ari um, Ariana because she's off the board so skill drain doesn't negate her so kind of like those interactions um, I kind of like or if you have big welcome in the graveyard you can do the same thing summon Ariana activate big welcome bounce Ariana back to your hand um, to, to be able to resolve her effect so yeah those are kind of like some niche interaction I like but uh, yeah definitely skill drain is still really really good if your opponent doesn't have an out to skill drain they're basically kind of donezo and if you guys seen me play master duel it's limited to one but like every time I flip this thing it just basically seals the game for uh, my opponent almost like 90% of the time uh, especially in the, I guess in the best of one format you're kind of expected to not be able to answer skill drain uh, maybe in the best of three format more people are playing more answers to skill drain but you do have three copies so uh, mine as well um, next off we play um, triple imperm as our um, sort of next uh, hand trap I guess and yeah not really much to say about it and this enables you to be able to summon out lady um, on your opponent's turn so you go imperm during the end phase you can summon out lady um, but yeah just pretty good and then for our kind of like one of those traps we have one D barrier pretty self-explanatory uh, one punishment I always kind of like punishment um, being able to pop two cards and be able to somewhat interact with the, the back row is kind of nice. Um, so yeah, and then we have one um, Dharma Cannon. Now the uh, Dharma Cannon is sort of um, me testing it out, uh, mainly because I think uh, Overroot is not as good with with Cashier not being as great. 
Um, Castillo is pretty rampant in Master Duel, so I think Overroot is better because you can kind of mess with their board and their grave and uh, screw up their summons. But Dark Mechanic, I think overall is better, and it works against like the Pearly stuff. You can flip up, flip down Pearly, um, nowhere, because uh, it, it makes your opponent do something, not the card itself. So it affects unaffected cards like that. So the one Dharma Cannon, um, why not, right? So it's like a, a giant Book of Eclipse, and if they have like Link Monsters or they have something like, like Alpalusa or something like that, they have to send that to the graveyard, or if they have tokens. Like a Nibiru token or any tokens on the board, they have to send that to the graveyard. Um, yeah, so Dharma, Dharma Cannon is kind of like a, a weird mix between a Trencho Tribute and a Book of Eclipse. So, um, but yeah, it's it's nice. It's cool to have, and it still procs uh, your um, your uh, chandeliers and stuff like that in the graveyard um, if you set if you manage to send something to the graveyard. So, all right. Next off, I'll talk about the, um, the extra deck. Now, the extra deck is a giant work in progress. Like, I, I kind of threw this together today, so I don't really know um, what a good side deck looks like quite yet because I haven't really played this in the TCG. So, until I start playing the TCG, this side deck is kind of like a kind of a, uh, um, a stopgap right now because I really don't know what to do quite yet. So, forgive me if this side deck looks kind of shitty. So... Uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll go through it anyway. So I have two Lava Golems. Uh, I decided to go with Lava, Lava Golem because uh, of two factors. One, that it's a Fiend. So you can still summon this thing out uh, even if you welc uh, welcome Labyrinth. So it's, it's that's the one good thing. So you summon um, Lava Golem. Also get rid gets rid of two things. So uh, right in three. Because sometimes people play around Raw Spear mode. But they won't usually play around uh, Lava Golem. And uh, it's also nice that if you have a big welcome in the graveyard, you can bounce. If you love going someone, you can always bounce this back to your hand and then use it again. So that's kind of nice because you don't really need your normal summons all that much. So you're you can play Lava Golem. Uh, I prefer yeah Lava Golem over Kaiju's for sure in this particular deck. Um, but yeah, two two Lava Golems for going second. Uh, I think three might be a little, a little too much, but yeah, two for now seems like it would be okay. Uh, and then for more graveyard hate, uh, in case we're playing against uh, a deck that's not light or dark, that's uh, still using the graveyard, or even if, we, if we're playing against a deck that's using the graveyard heavily, like um, uh, Bistrials or anything like that, or Dragon Links, we'll, we'll shove these in, um, and these can be kind of like our turn zero uh, interaction if we have them, discard them with like the Chandeliers and all that, um, be able to trigger them in the graveyard, so it's kind of nice to be able to um, have that available to us. And then um, kind of like a random card. I, this is not really. Um, I, I haven't really figured out what to do with this card yet. So this is just a random ghost spell here. Uh, once I play more games, I'll, I'll figure if I need her at all or not. So she's kind of just a placeholder for now. Uh, one Harpy's Feather Duster. Uh, just a clear back roll. I guess you can use this against um, Royal Decree if anyone plays that. So. Um, but for now, I don't. I don't think you're gonna run into any world decrees. But yeah, there you are. So one harpy sweater does. So why not, right? Um, you can also play evenly match or lightning storm. Those are also good options for a uh, sideboard card. But I, I don't really have droplets right now, and uh, lightning storms are in my other deck. So I decided just to stick with uh, what I have right here. All right. Um, sort of the other one ofs here is we got the three viruses. I decided not to main them quite yet. Um, this is just kind of like your tech card. So like in ma um, in Master Duels, I would just play, I would just main deck Ep Epidemic um, because you don't have a side deck. So if you need it, you can activate it. If you don't need it, you just leave it and ne never search it. Um, in the best of three, I guess for now, I'm just having all three for sort, for sort of coverage. Um, so if you don't know, this one hits spells and traps. This one hits 1500 defense or lower. Um, but you need something with 2,000 defense or higher to um, tribute, which uh, is really easy in this deck because you can use your Ariana and you can use your Stovey or you can use your um, your ladies or even your Bistrials to um, tribute for full force virus. And then for deck devastation virus, uh, you can use anything with 2,000 attack or more, um, and then that will hit anything with 1,500 attack and less, I believe. Uh, yeah. 
So yeah, I mean these these two are kind of conflicting. So you could just maybe just play one or the other. Don't really need both of these. I think I would probably pick uh, deck devastation. That probably is better than um, deck force virus or full force virus. But we'll have to see, right? Um, yeah. And then, all right. Moving on, we have triple solemn judgment. Um, not really much to say. I think this is just kind of a good going first card. Protect your back row. Protect whatever you need. Um, not much to really say about solemn there. And finally, for the um, floodgate, I guess we're playing triple goizen. Uh, you can you can do triple rivalry if you like, or um, instead, I guess. I chose Goizen match because that's what I have, and Goizen works well against Castiria because I think they're all different attributes. Um, same thing with like Pearlies, I guess they're light or dark, so you can force them to just stick on dark and not be able to summon out light uh, ones if you want. Granted, it's it's kind of like whatever's. You could also play something like Anti Spell if you wanted to, uh, just to mess with people. The only problem with playing uh, Anti Spell is that you have no way of getting rid of their back row. So I kind of don't like uh, anti-spell all that much, unless you're just abusing um, Lovely uh, by you know bouncing and popping. But other than that, um, yeah, triple coins match, uh, pretty pretty good there. And then, yeah, let's talk about the extra deck, right? So that's the final part here. For extra deck, I kind of just copy and paste my uh, master duel deck over. Um, it probably will change in the future, but for now, this is what I got. So. Um, bear with me here. I have one uh, Underworld Goddess, so she's basically just to get rid of uh, any sort of monster you're having kind of issues dealing with. Not much to say. Uh, I have Triple Mudcracker here. Uh, yeah, pretty nice uh, card. Kind of almost mandatory in this deck. I would at least run two, if not three. Um, if you, I got the space, so I'm just playing three, so there you go. I'm playing one Dark, one Phoenix Nightmare. Um, you can replace them if you want. I, I think Phoenix Nightmare is kind of a, a good keep. Uh, dark is a little greedy, I guess, but Dark is also nice in the sense that you can kind of get rid of like Ibli and stuff with it. Um, some people play the what should I call it, um, Ling uh instead, but I figured I can still f summon like a Chandelier or whatever, and then. You know, link link the uh, um, link the uh, IP or not? Sorry, not the IP. The uh, or Ibli, yeah, it's link the Ibli away with Dark, so it's not such a huge deal to me, I guess. Um, then I have Triple Entis here. Um, yeah, just because um, I'm not playing Garura and the Tri Brigade thing because I always kind of it never really worked out that well because every time I activate Pot of Extravagance. I'll banish one or the other, and I, I just never use one or the other. So I decided to just go triple in test and call it a day. I don't really want to think about it. Um, if I need to kill something that's bigger than 2,500, I can just dump a Chaos Angel. Not a big deal. It, it's okay to go for one for one with the um, with the punishment. So you know, like Entis uh, um, is yeah, it gives you a two for one. But you could definitely just do one for one. It's fine. It's not not a huge deal if you dump it. Um, you dump Chaos Angel with it. So, and then next off, I have one Dingisu, one uh, Babuska, and one Zeus. Not really much to say about them. Kind of like if you need to go into them, you can go into them. But I rarely summon them. Uh, I I don't think I've ever really summoned Dingisu. I summoned Zeus maybe once or twice, maybe. Um, if I brick or something like that, I'll go into. Babuska, but these cards are just kind of optional. You can you can play the um, what you would call it the DDD package instead, because you just go um, into the level four DDD and then overlay that into the uh, DDD King. Um, that's also an option. Or if you're playing Gamma, uh, you can play the Excel Excel Synchro Dragon, I think, with the uh, Baron. Um, or you can play. Um, Cyframe Omega. So those are some options for you to play. Um, or you can even do the Tri Brigade, um, you know, Garua if you wanted to. So these are just kind of like optional. I almost rarely ever go into these, but they're there in case uh, you need to. Okay, now I'm not playing this card, right? This this is just a placeholder. Uh, I don't have Chaos Angel, but 
this should be triple chaos angel right now chaos angel is kind of being bought out in my area and so they're kind of hard to come by um so these are supposed to be triple chaos angel chaos angel you you do actually um you you do actually do summon out chaos angel so uh i would say triple is pretty good uh because if you like pop extravagance um, sometimes I banish two of them it's always nice to be able to have access to one uh, especially if you're playing the visual package like I am so uh, they'll come up more often than not um, and you can do some kind of cool combos with them you can if you have one in the graveyard uh, you can bring it back with labyrinth uh, labyrinth labyrinth because uh, that brings back any fiends from your graveyard and every time chaos angel gets summoned you can banish a card um, or if you have Mudcracker, another cool, tr like simple trick is to like, if you have um, Chaos Angel plus another monster, you can link them both away into a Mudcracker, activate Mudcracker, uh, pitch a card, target the Chaos Angel, bring out, bring back the Chaos Angel, and then banish another card. Um, so yeah, you end up with a Mudcracker and a Chaos Angel, which is kind of nice, and you just you can kind of rinse and repeat that um, a few times if you wanted to. So those are the options uh, for your extra decks, and I. Th you know, it's pretty staple right now, pretty cookie cutter. Um, I honestly don't go into my extra deck all that much, uh, especially when I'm playing on Master Duel. Uh, rarely go into it. Maybe like two out of ten games I'll go in there. Um, obviously, I'll, I'll dump Entis a lot when I have Punishment, but outside of that, um, don't really summon much from my my uh, extra deck. Uh, but there are plenty of other options for you to play. Um, but I think this is kind of like a good a good stu good stu starting point right so um, that's sort of um, s something you guys can do there anyways that's basically it for my for my uh, labyrinth deck um, and it's definitely gonna change the future as I play especially my side deck because my side deck right now is just kind of thrown together I don't really know what the um, uh, what kind of matchups I'm expected to play against um, or how to side against them because I've been playing mostly trap tricks in the TCG so and sort of black wings and so um, I only really know how to side for those decks I haven't really played Lambert in the TCG so it's gonna be all sort of new to, for me but what's nice is that this deck is super cheap to make now uh, I think I made an entire deck for like 40 bucks or something like that like, I had a lot of the cards but the Labyrinth card themselves that I um, when I bought them uh, I yeah you know, my friend did give me a discount but like together I think the whole like engine and everything was like maybe 40 bucks for all the Lambeth cards most of them are like a dollar uh ladies are like you know three three dollars two dollars now they're really cheap uh welcome labyrinth is like a buck or two really cheap the only really expensive card honestly is big welcome if you don't if you didn't pick up big welcome then yes this kind of sucks cuz they are about 16 18 dollars now which makes this like alone like 60 bucks um because they, they didn't get reprinted so I, I would say if you wanted to make this deck you can wait a little bit wait a week or two the hype will die down the prices will come down again maybe people play labyrinth they don't like it they sell their deck they sell pieces of their deck um so if you're looking to build labyrinth and these cards are still a little in inaccessible i would just wait a few weeks maybe a month and the prices will come down for sure i, I think they're at the the highest price now but they'll come back down kind of like um trap tricks when trap tricks came out all the high rarity cards were really expensive you wait like two three months people lose interest in the deck they don't perform well or they don't like the the, the general play style deck they'll start selling off the deck and it'll just come back down and be really really cheap so um at at, at most um they'll be like you know, five bucks or something like that um other than that uh, the only other expensive card is maybe Extravagance, which is maybe four, five, eight bucks, depending on where you are. Um, I picked mine up kind of early, so they weren't that bad. Uh, the Bistro should be pretty cheap. Ash Blossom is it's okay. You can get the common ones for pretty cheap. Uh, Nibiru's are like three, four bucks, not too bad. Uh, the rest of these are, are basically bulk. Um, Impermanence, you could probably find common ones or whatever for a couple bucks there not not too bad skill drain yeah just a couple bucks too obviously I have like the higher rarity stuff so it's a little bit more expensive but um, in general all oh, that's really cheap same thing with extra deck except for the triple chaos angel which I think these are $60 each right now that's like the bulk of the 
the cost of the entire deck because everything else in my extra deck I believe save for Zeus is maybe a dollar um, or at least you know a couple bucks here and there not really bank breaking but yeah the Chaos Angel will wreck the cost of this deck I think everything else is cheap side deck uh, yeah nothing nothing expensive either everything here you can can be had for a few bucks um, you know three four bucks here a dollar dollar um, overall if you're looking to build labyrinth uh, I would say put put between two hundred and fifty dollars maybe um, maybe two hundred dollars two hundred to three hundred dollars I would say is a good good price range for the deck um, the bulk of the deck is gonna or the bulk cost of the deck is going to be coming from the Chaos Angel, unfortunately, but you know, if you really want to play the deck you can wait about a year or so, they'll, re they'll reprint Chaos Angel and it'll be probably like a $30, $20 card by then um, yeah, anyways that's it um, if I have any updates from this, I'll let you guys know if not, stay tuned for my live commentaries on uh, playing Labyrinth on Master Duel. I probably won't, probably won't have any live commentary of me playing in real life because that requires me setting up a camera and getting the okay from my opponent to like uh, record and not everyone's cool with being on camera so I don't really want to go through all that trouble quite yet. Maybe I can record some of my gameplays test playing with my friends uh, but as for like tourneys and locals I probably won't get any footage uh, for a while, or at least until maybe I get a new phone or a new camera or something like that. Um, but until then, um, sorry guys, don't don't really have any footage of uh, IRL gameplay. But um, I'll let you guys know if if anything changes. Anywho, that's it. Peace out. See you guys later.